Hi, and thanks for logging on to the Daily Dvar Halacha. And here's a brand new Halacha for you, and it's for Monday, 8th day of August, which is the 4th day of Av. And uh, here are some more of the laws that you'll need to know for Tisha B'Av, which we'll all be observing next Sunday. You know that we don't learn regular parts of Torah because that gladdens the heart. And if a rabbi is teaching a group of children on Tisha B'Av, the children could be young enough that that prohibition might not apply to them because children don't get as much joy as they often should from learning Torah. And if you'd say, if you teach them regular Torah, they're going to have great joy. They sort of kind of might not. But anyway, the, the proper thing to do for an adult leader, rabbi, or whatever who's teaching children is to teach whatever parts of uh, learning are acceptable for the leader or the rabbi or the adult, and he can teach that to the children on the day of Tishba. So let's go through that list of things that are acceptable to learn on the day of Tisha B'Av because they, they involve sadness and they don't bring the usual joy to the heart that learning Torah usually does. You can learn the book of Eov because that is a generally considered a sad story and uh, all the commentary and everything, just study that book of Eov if you want to. Also, there are parts of Yirmiya which discuss the, the coming destruction of the temple. That too can be learned on Tisha B'Av. Eicha, of course, what we, you know, that uh, thing that we lean on Tisha B'Av night, you could be learning that throughout the day of Tisha B'Av anytime. The third parak of a Masechta called Moed Katan deals with some laws that involve uh, sadness and mourning, so that could be learned also on Tisha B'Av. The Gemara in Gitin on Daf Nun Vav, that's 56, that can be learned because it has all the stories of the destruction. The Gemara in Sanhedrin on Kufdala, that's 104, that Gemara also discusses uh, destruction things of the temple, etc., and therefore it can be learned on the day of Tisha B'Av. The story of Josephus, which is basically the, the writing down of the history of what happened at the destruction, you can read that on the day of Tisha B'Av. The Yerushalmi, that's uh, written at the end of the Masechta Kaltanis, about fast days, that too is uh, appropriate for learning on Tisha B'Av. You can, of course, learn the laws of Tisha B'Av out of a good Tisha B'Av book. You can learn the laws of mourning out of a good morning book on the day of Tisha B'Av. And if you're reading the Torah in the morning or the afternoon, you can prepare the leaning. That would be fine. You can do that also on the day of Tisha B'Av. And lastly, we're just going to tell you that we don't give our usual hellos to people on the day of Tisha B'Av. So whereas you would like to say, good morning, how are you? We don't say those kind of greetings on the day of Tisha B'Av because of our sadness. If you bump into someone who's negligent on that law and gives you a big good morning, don't embarrass them. Just give them a kind of like, you know, somber uh, response so they'll kind of realize, oh, did I, oh yeah, 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 on Tisha B'Av. You know, just y your response wouldn't embarrass them, but just kind of put down the joyousness of the big uh, hello because we don't do big, big hellos on the day of uh, Tisha B'Av. You know, when we pick up our phones, usually everybody answers their phone saying hello, uh, and that's not 100% proper on the day of Tisha B'Av. So some people pick up their phone on Tisha B'Av and just say, Tisha B'Av, or they just say yes, you know, as long as you're not saying that big greeting hello that we do at the beginning of phone calls, that would be not so appropriate on the day of Tisha B'Av. Thanks for logging on. Log on again tomorrow for more. Bye-bye.